What is it that entrepreneurs actually do? What is it that makes entrepreneurs different from other types of people? Uh, one of the classic works on this subject, and it's kind of rare because if you go to Adam Smith, if you go to Ayn Rand, you, you see a defense of capitalism, a defense of entrepreneurship, but not an actual description, a delineation about the uniqueness of the entrepreneur. Now, Joseph Schumpeter in his book, The Entrepreneur, does do this. This is why, to me, this is a very important book. Uh, and I test it by measuring it against my own kind of entrepreneurial ventures. I remember, for example, when I first concocted the idea of doing this movie uh, on Obama, I um, I met a guy who wrote me a check for $100,000, but I told him it's going to take two or two and a half million dollars to make the film. And he's like, well, here's $100,000. Go find 19 other guys to give you the same. And I was like, whoa. Uh, of course, I had no experience in filmmaking. I was known as a writer, a think tank guy. And so I'd go to potential investors who did have the money, but they would look at me as if, what? What are you talking about? A movie? What, what good is that going to do? How are you going to get that out? How are you going to even make it? And so uh, th this is something that Schumpeter talks about. He basically says that the entrepreneur comes up with an idea. And uh, we often think that the entrepreneur needs to have like a new invention, a kind of, no, yes, there are entrepreneurs who come up with new inventions uh, and then figure out how to get them out. But ordinary entrepreneurship is you just identify a need and the need could be very small. It, it could involve no, nothing new. It's just what uh, Schumpeter calls a new combination. And so, for example, uh, the uh, the suitcase has been around for a long time and the wheel has been around for a long time, but roll-on luggage hasn't been around for a long time. So an entrepreneur may go, listen, what if I took the wheel? What if I took the suitcase? I stuck the wheels on the suitcase. Suddenly, it's much easier to get around with your luggage. So something so simple, an innovation, not an invention. So the entrepreneur comes up with an idea. And this is where I think, and the idea, as I say, could be kind of narrow. Why, why shouldn't we have little places and cars where we can put our coffee cups? Think about it. The entrepreneur isn't, isn't inventing the, the coffee and he isn't inventing the car. He's just figuring out that, listen, for a long time, we've had cars and people like in general to drive, to have coffee while they're driving to work. Uh, so what about an innovation in which cars are made a little differently so that it's very easy for you to deposit your coffee cup right in, right beside you? So the entrepreneur has an idea. Sometimes it's a narrow idea, but here's the point. Nobody else sort of gets the idea. Why? Because the idea is something novel. It's something that doesn't exist before. Think about it. If it existed before, then somebody would have done it. Somebody already would have done it. But the very fact that you have a new idea, when you present it to other people, they look at you as if to go, huh? And so the entrepreneur, says Schumpeter, not only has to meet the resistance of society, of the people around him, who thinks that the idea is downright stupid, but the entrepreneur has to meet resistance inside of himself or herself. In other words, the entrepreneurs, because all of us have an element in ourselves that's conventional. We like to trod the, the straight path. We like to walk on the road and not make the road. And so Schumpeter says that there's a little part of you that goes, well... It kind of is stupid. I mean, how do I even know that there's going to be a need for this? How do I even know that this thing that I'm trying to make, this system I'm trying to create, is even going to work? How do I know there's any demand for this so-called product that I'm all excited about? So the entrepreneur, says Schumpeter, the, the courageous, uh, adventurous part of the entrepreneur has got to shut down the, uh, the frightened, uh, uh, anxious, conventional part of yourself. You have to win the battle inside of yourself and um, you've then got to push ahead with it. And now, says Schumpeter, the idea by itself is not enough. There are countless people who have really good ideas. Uh, you know, an academic sits around. And in fact, think of it. Here's uh, Isaac Newton, uh, who sits in his um, in his office at um, um, at Oxford. And he goes, I know a way to put satellites. He doesn't call them satellites, but to put objects into geosynchronous orbit. Uh, Newton thinks of it, but he doesn't do it. Now, admittedly, in, in Newton's defense, at his time, it couldn't be done. But he comes up with the idea. But, says Schumpeter, the key is what he calls the activity, the energy, the ambition to carry the idea out, to see it through, to push it. Uh, and again, says Schumpeter, you've got to overcome the risk-averse part of yourself. 
that says it can't be done, it's not easy to do, how am I going to solve this problem? You've essentially got to approach this almost with the military attitude of a conqueror and go out and do it. Now, the next interesting phase is you come up with a system and you now need the cooperation of others to be part of this. And so, says Schumpeter, the obvious thing might seem to be you get a bunch of people around and say, listen, guys, I've got an incredible idea and I know how to carry it out. Let me reveal my idea to you and let me reveal how it's going to be carried out. And I want you to partner with me as fellow entrepreneurs and let's all carry this out. But, says Schumpeter, that will never work. Because first of all, nobody else gets the idea. And second of all, nobody else can understand how to carry it out either. Uh, what people understand is pretty much what you tell them. So if you tell a guy, listen, you take this and you go from here and give it to another guy over there, people are like, okay, I can do that. And you say, well, how about if I give you a quarter percent interest in my company for doing that? The guy's like, no, I want $40. And so, says Schumpeter, what you discover is there are all kinds of people who are necessary to your entrepreneurial scheme, but they don't get the scheme, they don't want to take the risk, uh, and they merely will do the tasks that they're assigned, which means that they have no, not only no understanding of the overall scheme, they have no interest in it. They don't care how you're going to get from here to there. They merely want to know, what do I have to do and what are you going to pay me? And so says Schumpeter, what the entrepreneur has to do is using the mechanism of money, uh, enlist all these people to carry out his scheme, even though they have no clue what the scheme is. In fact, if you think about it, says Schumpeter, I think this is very insightful. He says that for the worker, there's only one customer, and that's the boss. The boss is your customer. The worker has to please only the boss. And so the entrepreneur is the boss. The, uh, the worker essentially delivers services to the entrepreneur, but the entrepreneur's boss is actually the public that will eventually consume his product, of which the entrepreneur hasn't met these people yet. And in fact, those people in some cases, this is where I think it becomes really interesting, they don't even know that they want or need the product. Why? because they've never seen it before. It's a new way of doing something. It's a new thing. And so the entrepreneur has ultimately got to sell them on the idea that you need to try this out. This is actually going to make your life better. This is going to be worth the tariff, the cost that I'm going to place upon it. So the entrepreneur really is the hero uh, heroine uh, of capitalist society. I think it's really amazing that there's been so little, um, I don't mean um, devotional uh, celebration of the entrepreneur, but just mere intelligent chronicling and identifying of what is it that, that makes entrepreneurs different from, let's call them run-of-the-mill people. And Schumpeter's conclusion, which he substantiates throughout the book, and by the way, it's a book bristling with ideas and bristling with insights. What he's really saying is that most people are conventional, but the entrepreneur is the unconventional man.